Hey everybody, welcome back to Girdle Ranger, your number one channel for ethical hacker resources and walkthroughs. Today we're going to be coming at you with another video called SQ Hell. Um, try Hack Me Box. Um, this box was created by Adam T. Langley. Got him right here in front of you. And this box deals uh, with trying to find all the flags in SQL injections. Um, this is an actually a fun box. Uh, kind of difficult, makes you bang your head on the table a few times to try to figure out exactly what's going on, but it is doable. Um, it is rated medium. I would say for me, it was more rated difficult because I'm not the best at SQL injections, but I will say after this box, I learned a lot and got a lot from this box. So uh, hook up. Um, we're going to take a little bit of a ride here as we go through this, this box and, um, we'll see exactly if you guys pull any new knowledge from this, how we walk through it. Um, again, if you guys are loving the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. And um, let's go ahead and kick on this box. Okay, starting off this box, you know what's coming first. We need to go ahead and run an nmap scan on this machine. I've already conducted the nmap scan and put it right in front of you. And um, as we look into it, a couple things immediately you're going to see is that the port 22 and port 80 is open on this machine. I will let you know that port 22, there's going to be nothing you're going to be doing with port 22 on this one. You have to actually have a specific uh, ID um, key with your login for the SSH. So this is more or less probably for Adam to be able to get in and log into for maintenance. Everything is going to be done on port 80 on the HTTP website on this machine. So let's go ahead and move on to, since we have port 80 open, let's go ahead and run a fuzz on it and see what we get. All right, so when we actually fuzz this website, what we're gonna actually find is that there is actually not many web pages that are actually on this website. And I've actually run a fuzz for multiple recursion levels down using FFUF. And immediately I'm getting basic um, web page uh, pages that are popping up on here. You've got login, register, user, and post. And when you actually bring up the web page, you'll actually see that it's a basic blog that actually pops up here. And most of everything that you see here, minus the terms and conditions page, popped up on the fuzz. And diving into this website further, you're going to find out, again, this web page is very basic and does not have many pages onto it because the intent is not to be able to find different web pages from recursion levels, but to be able to enumerate the uh, extension, the proper extension endings of each web page to properly uh, inject SQL injections and get information from them from the database that's running in the background of each page. Um, I would also say if you bring up um, a little note here, I wanted to give everybody some attention to um, what you're going to be working through is five different basic type SQL injections. Um, you're going to be dealing with some in-band classic ones where you're either dealing with an error um, you're trying to error out the SQL to SQL database to get some information out, learning to work with union statements. And then we start getting into some more difficult ones, which are not fun to work through, but are doable. You've got the time-based and the Boolean-based SQL injections that allow you to enumerate different information, determine exactly what information, what critical information is behind, um, those databases so um and then some out of band ones but basically these are the five different types and the five flags you're going to be working through now what we're going to do is i am not going to go in order of the flags one through five i'm going to be going out of order but working through what i believe is the easiest ones to the hardest ones and how i was able to derive the information Let's go ahead and start off. And actually, number one is the easiest one to start with. All right, first flag, here we go. So the first flag we're going to be looking at is an error-based flag. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to feed some basic SQL coding to see if we can at least get 
the database to kick back any type of information. So the first one we're going to find is actually on the login page of this website. And here you're going to see that there's a username and a password. Well, what we have to see here is we do have a user already here and this user is admin. So we know that admin exists on this database. Now, what we usually like to do to find out if this will work for an error based one is we want to write a true statement in SQL. So we already know that the username is admin. Now to usually end a SQL based statement, we're usually going to put an apostrophe or the single quotation mark to end it. And then we need to write something here that's usually going to be a true based statement and then end the comment or comment the ending of the SQL statement if we have the ability to inject into it. Just writing the apostrophe will kick back, you know, invalid combination. But what we need to do is let's go ahead and write admin, single quotation, and then we're going to write and one equals one, which is a true statement, and then comment out the rest of it. And if it's a true statement, we will get the flag and that will actually kick back the information. So this right here is how you find flag number one and is the easiest one to find straightforward. All right, the second flag we're going to look at is actually flag number five. Flag number five actually becomes the second to easier one to work with. And flag number five is actually a union based um, flag. Now to to find out that this is actually a union-based SQL injection, the next spot we're actually going to go to is actually one of the posts. You can find this either at post one or post two. And this is the first post, and this is the second post from the admin. And what you want to look at is up here in the address bar, it'll say post ID equals two. And what we're going to do is, again, we're going we're gonna to drop in a true statement, and if the true statement goes through and comes back fine, then we know we actually have the ability to inject into this SQL database. So what we're going to do is we're going to write on this one, uh, and one equals one. And as you can see, the website is still comes up perfectly fine. Now, if we change this to one, say one equals three, it's actually going to say post is not found. All right. So we know that we have a SQL database here behind the scenes and that if we write a true statement in, it's, it's going to work. So what we're going to do now is we need to find out, first of all, how many columns exist in the database. So the next thing we're going to throw up in here is we're going to drop in post ID is two and we're going to go by order by. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to drop in is order by two. Now this is going to be kind of slow, but we're going to see that it comes up perfectly fine. So we know the database has two columns right now. Okay. We just started enumerating them. Now you could do this in Zappo, Wasp, because do it in Burp Suite, but I'm just going to walk everybody through what I'm seeing here. All right, so we know we got three, three is good. Let's go ahead and drop four in. Four is good. And let's drop in five and we have unknown column five in order clause. Okay, so now we know there are four columns in the database. So with that, we need to see if we can go ahead and get a union select off of all those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write a statement. If you don't mind, I've already written these and put these in my notes. We're then gonna write another one that's gonna basically have the same thing, but now we're going to write a false statement and we're gonna to try to figure out if any of these four columns are able to be enumerated. So what we're gonna write is ID equals two, and one equals two. So because we have a false and 
instead of or, we have an and and a true, it all works out to false. So then it will then take into account the union select one, two, three, four. And when we write that, we find out that columns two and three are vulnerable to our injections. So we don't want to put any information in one or four of the columns. So this is where we can drop a lot of different things in. And I'll show you a table here um, and pop it up here shortly to kind of, so you can see what is available to drop in. But the best thing I like to do here, since I have two now available to me, is I will go ahead and write in the user variable, and then I will write in the database variable. Now, the, you can always do nulls here, but I'm trying to get as much information as I can out of this video so you can see what we have here. So when you write that in, now what it's going to do, it's going to kick back and show you, all right, the database name is sqhel underscore five. So this is the fifth iteration of the database. Uh, and then the user that is currently logged into this database right now is user six. Good information. All right, now that we have that information, what we need to do then is now find out the names of the tables that exist on this database. So the next command that I wrote and dropped in here is that you're gonna have union select one, two, table name, or from information schema tables where table schema equals the database name of SQL5. And we should get the name of the database in the third column because that's where we're implementing it in. So once we send that in, you're going to find that there is a table called flag. And if you remember the information that Adam gave you as hints for the room is that the database will always be called flag where the flag is located. All right, so we now we know we have four columns. We have a database called flag. All right, so what's the next thing we have to do? Well, the next thing we need to do is we need to now find out on the table flag, not the database, excuse me, the, the table flag, we need to find out how many columns exist in the table and what the names of those tables are. So um, again, from my notes, I've already built these. So the next one we're gonna send in is going to be a false statement, union select one, two, column name four, from information schema columns where table name equals flag. And this limit right here allows us to enumerate and iterate up. You can do this again in OWASP and ZAP. So this is gonna be the first variable for the first column. And we're gonna see exactly what it says. And when you drop that in, it's gonna drop in and say, the first column is called ID, all right? And then when you go back in here, the very end we can all we have to do is just go up one and the next column is called flag all right so we know that zero of one and one of one equals id and flag so once you take all that information and you bring it all together you then want to write another statement that says this one equals two false statement union select one two concat we know id and flag we can do id and flag together in one or you could put id here and you could put flag in the next variable here from the database dot table name flag limit zero one and when you add them together you will then find the flag and it will put both of them together for you the id name which is one and then the flag details that you can copy and paste in. So this is how you find flag number five, and this is the second easiest one. And this one again is a union-based SQL injection. All right, flag number three is our third hardest or third easiest flag, whichever which way you want to look at it from the, from the number line um, flag we're going to be looking for. This one is actually a Boolean based SQL injection. Um, there's a few things you can do here to determine that there is a SQL database and that there is a way to determine that a flag or a database does exist. 
but to actually enumerate and find out what the flag is, you are going to have to use SQL map, but it doesn't mean we can't learn a little bit of how to be able to determine this is a Boolean based um, SQL database injection that you can do here to get the flag. So back on the blog, we're going to go to the register page. Once we're on the register page, um, as you can see, if you click register, registrations are no longer open, but we still have a database here and we have the username, the password and the confirmed password. But we know that there's already a user called admin on this database. So having a user named admin is a true statement. So usually when you're trying to validate a user agent on a database, you're going to be adding some additional information on here, which is usually going to be that you're going to be checking the user check question mark, like remember the post, post ID question mark, username equals admin. And then if we add a single quotation at the end, hit OK, you're going to be presented with the JSON that actually works on the back of this web page, which means that it's a true statement. So if we come back here and we come back and we say admin available true. So once we know that we have a true statement, what we want to do is we want to create some Boolean logic based on the database. And we know that the database should have a table named flag. And so if we're able to build a large enough statement where it should pull the information, we should be able to kick a false statement. A false statement is actually going to mean that there is something existing. So in this case, true means we've errored it out, but false, if we get a false here on the table, that means that something does exist. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a statement here. Just like we did earlier, we're going to write union select. And what we're going to say is, let's say we're going to say one exists. And we're going to say from a table called flag, which we know exists from Adam. And then where the, where the flag is like going to say, we know that each flag starts with THM. We're going to use a T and then we're going to use percentage 25. And we're going to try sending that through. And when we send that through, it's going to come back as true. Okay. Let's, this is almost like working through order of and enumerating up. So let's say we're going to move up from two and we get true again. Okay. Let's go ahead and enumerate up to three. And there we go, we got a false right there. So this states to us, there is a database that exists back here on the register user of the user agent of admin, union select one, two, three. So there's three columns here from a table called flag where the flag is like starting off with the letter T. So how are we gonna find the full information? Well, this is the, inf now that we know this information, what we wanna do is we want to go ahead and grab from here to here and we're going to copy this and we're going to head on over and we're going to open up a terminal and once we open up the terminal we're going to go ahead and put a command in of the same iteration uh, same address we just copied which is we're going to run a sql map under the host with the user check agent on here of all the way up to username equals admin and simply, we're going to go ahead and drop this into dump. And once we start doing that, it's going to start working through it. And all you have to do is hit yes on this. But basically, what it's going to determine is that, yes, there's a database here. Yes, it is responsive to Boolean-based questions. And it's going to run iter an iteration script on here. And it's going to provide you the flag. So keep running through this with that information right there, and you'll find flag number three.
All right, flag number two, the second hardest one to figure out. This one has some clues on it, and it's not really up front what the clues mean, but you need to do a little bit of digging to figure out exactly what they're talking about. So on this one, it gives you a hint to go to the terms and conditions and read through the terms and conditions. When you read on the terms and conditions, it's going to pop up and says, we only have a few small terms. We own the soul of any visitors. You can't be blamed for any security breaches. And we log your IP address for analytics purposes. This is one of the big ones you need to concentrate on. So when you look at this one, you start diving through it and you kind of understand what's going on. You start doing some Googling. You're going to find out what you're doing is you are enumerating or injecting into a vulnerability for header data for a website. And through all the digging I did, there's actually a really good website you can find from the infosecinstitute.com where they talk about SQL injection through HTTP headers from the IP address that is logging. That was the clue. When you come through this web page and you start reading through it, you'll start figuring out that there are four different types of parameters that you can be, that can be vulnerable from the website. And as you read further on about how to be able to determine if the website uh, what, what kind of attacks and what SQL injections you're looking for an X forwarded for type injection. And another website I found that was really good is from outpost24.com where this individual talks about how they took um, the X forward for information and found out that it was vulnerable. But what you're going to find out is not only is it almost Boolean based, but it's also time based. So the only time you're going to have to iterate through single letters of every single detail that you need to find out from this website. And if you get a time based response on the one variable, you'll know that that is a true statement while the other variables are false. So if you take into account how many uppercase letters, 26, with lowercase letters, 26, plus numbers, which are 10 total, and then also different ASCII characters, there are thousands upon thousands of enumerations that you would be working through that are time-based to be able to determine if there is a database back here. So this is a time-based one. And unless you have a personal script, this would take you forever to figure out just by iterating manually by yourself. So we now know that it is an X, it's an X forward four injection type. And we want to go ahead and use a script. Easiest one to go to work with is SQL map. So we're going to go back to SQL map and I'm going to show you exactly how you get this information. It does take some time to get. All right, so now we're at the terminal and this is exactly what you need to type in for SQL map. You need to go to SQL map, let it know that you're going to be basing it off of the main website and the headers detail you're going to put in X forwarded for one star and dump. And once we send that information in, it's going to start asking you certain questions. And then we're going to let it start running. And as it runs through this, you're going to see that it is going to start enumerating through each single letter of the database to determine if there's something in the database worth finding and getting you all the information. So we're going to let it run and let's see if we can't get it to populate all the information of the flag that we're looking for. One eternity later. Okay. And after I would say a good amount of time, close to about 15 to possibly 20 minutes, depending on how fast your, your virtual machine is running, you will get the flag. 
But again, it's actually fun to watch. You'll see that each single character and letter of your flag has to be enumerated based off of time delays, based off of this time-based SQL injection. So that is flag number two. All right, let's end it with flag number four. This is a fun one. So this one comes back to being an easier one because it is a union-based SQL injection, but the author Adam did leave us a clue where it said, well dreams, they feel real while we're in them, right? If you Google that, obviously you're going to, you're going to come up with a very popular U S movie that came out called inception. And if, if you actually watch the movie inception, you got to know about inception and what it's based off. The synopsis is to be able to get this individual in the movie to believe something, they have to go into dreams inside of dreams. So we got to remember again, Inception is going inside of something. So let's just remember that, but let's come back to our webpage, the My Blog. Now, while we're in My Blog, where we still have not gone yet is the user page. If you remember when we fuzz the website, the only user we have here is the admin. Top here, again, we have a variable up here extension that says user ID equals one. Well, if you remember on the union based one, we needed to be able to determine if this website was vulnerable to injections. Now we're not going to run this to SQL map. Yes, you can find the information that way, but I'm going to show you how to figure it out manually, which took me a while to do. So we're going to take the information. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine, you know, ID equals one and one equals one. And when we run that, we get a true statement and it runs perfectly fine. Again, if we do a one equals two, cannot find user, even though user ID one does exist. So that is a false statement. This is the true statement. All right. So again, we need to go ahead and run the orders on this. So now we need to determine how many columns are in the database. So we're going to run an order by, and let's go ahead and start with two and end it. And yes, that's a true statement. Okay. What about three? Yes, that is a true statement. What about four? That is not a true statement. So we know now that there are three columns in the database. So now what we're going to do is we're going to write a statement. I have in my notes here as I work through it. Where we're going to do a union select one, two, three. Now we could use nulls too. Uh, I like to use the numbers on it and different information. All right. So union select one, two, three is a true statement and we get the user information up. All right, good. So now, just like I did earlier with that table of information, what we're going to do is, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out what is the username and the database name that's on this machine. So now we're going to do union select user and the database and three. And when we run that down here, we're going to see that one and two of the, of the columns here are vulnerable and we get user four of the database SQL underscore four. All right, good. Now that we know that information, we need to find out table information now. So. Just like we knew, and you can find this on a lot of different web pages, how to walk through this. So once we find that information, we now want to find out what is the table name, select the table name. We're going to put this in the first column, two, three from information schema dot tables where table schema equals SQL four on that. And the table is called users. Okay. Now, once we know that of the table called users, we need to also find out other information from it. So we're going to iterate up. So we'll come back in here. And we're going to run again, a limit 
on information schema tables, zero of one. We get character sets. Oops. And then one of one. All right, so now we're seeing the actual SQL database details in there. So we know we're actually moving down the row of all of the information. Now, if I didn't have the limit one of one or zero of one up there, usually it would give me all the information, but because this website only gives you one line at a time, you have to run limits. So if we had multiple users on a table, you would have to go, you have to run a limit on this web page. But we're only looking for one variable here, so that's good to know. So now we need to determine the column names from the user table. So let's come back up in here. Next iteration we're going to run is another, we're going to go into column name two, three from information schema dot columns or table name equals users limit zero one run that. And the first one we're going to come up with is we're going to come up with ID and that's usual on any kind of database. It's usually system based. So the, so the first table or the first column in the table is ID. And if we do a limit one of one, the next column is called username. So that's exactly what we want to look at there. And I believe there's a third one here. What is the next table name? And that is password. Good. If you remember, we only have three columns. So if we try doing a three on here, we're going to have kind of find the user. All right. So now we know there's ID, username, and password. All right. So with that, we're going to go ahead and iterate further. And the way we're going to iterate with you using this is we're going to come up here, we're going to run a union select one, and we're going to concat username and password. Now, since we're pulling from the same table, we could, and we know both, you know, uh, variable one and two are vulnerable, what we actually can do if we want to, we don't even have to do a concat. Um, we can actually just put them all together in one. So since we know the first one is username, I don't need the ID number, that's system base. And we want to run, uh, actually keep three there. And we want to run a password three from the database for table users limit one zero of one. And if we run that, we're going to run into the user ID is admin and the username is password. If you ran SQL map, this is what you're going to find also. But SQL map can't actually find, unless there's a variable, I don't want to track it on SQL map, the, the flag. You have to still do this manually because you would think, okay, there's more information in this table. That's not the flag and how it's, how it's typed out. Well, if you try doing a one for one, you're going to come out with an error right there. So where's the flag? There's only one table in here, and there's, but there's no more information to be able to enumerate. Where's the flag? Well, as we talked about earlier, what did we say from the movie Inception? It's a dream inside of a dream. So what we need to think about outside of the box here is we need to think about a query inside of a query. And this is where you, again, need to work through this manually so you know where to put the positions. So. I'm going to look at column one here and what I'm going to drop in here, you'll see is a longer one here. And when you send the code in, I even changed it a little bit so you can see it looked like my original one before, position one, two, three, four, position two and three from the original one, flag from flag, limit zero one. The lower portion of the page now fills in with information and you'll see the flag enumerate out. And this is how you find your flag. You run a query inside of a query, and it's almost like it's called an inception injection. And if you actually look at it online, not much resources are out there, but there is a term called an inception injection I found where you can run a query inside of a query. And this is how you get flag number four, and this is how you end the, the box. So with that, we're going to go ahead and close out this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I learned actually a lot from this box from what I already knew from SQL injections. 
Um, I also want to give a congratulations to uh, the top 10 individuals that are already on the scoreboard. This box has only been out for so long and there's only been so many people that have actually solved it. Congratulations to all of you all on there. Um, it is a very difficult box and can stress your mind in different ways. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you're enjoying these videos, make sure you subscribe or hit that bell. And with that, uh, but also want to say a thank you again to uh, Adam for writing this box. I've actually been talking to him on Discord a little bit. Great individual and good information on there. I uh, hope he can actually put another box out. Um, hopefully he doesn't build one where it's an injection inside of a, a query, inside of a query, inside of a query. That would just suck. But it showed me there's a lot of ways to pull information out of these websites. So thank you, Adam, for this box. Nice shout out to him on that. Um, and from there, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Got some good knowledge off of this, some good education, and I hope you guys can solve this box. And with that, um, this is Girdo Ranger signing off. Hope you guys have a great one, and remember, stay safe and stay secure.